Passage from the summer house has led Joel to a room in the Chateau Marley, where the unconscious Aurora lies on a great domed bed, watched over by the old Duke of Almada. The old man starts up from his chair as the secret panel opens, and he is confronted by the huge, menacing figure of the Breton. But old and frail as he looks, Aramis is not easily frightened. He stands his ground and faces Joel unflinchingly, while the Breton, towering over him, glances quickly around the room. He's a law, then turns back grim and purposeful to his enemy. Yes, my lord, it is I, Joel of Lotharia. How came you here, Chevalier? You have a post in the army. Desertion is a grave offense. I have nothing to do with the army, my lord. Freiburg has been taken by me. I have Marshal Craigie's report attesting that in my pocket. Give it me. It is not for you, but for his majesty. And Freiburg is not our business at the moment. I have no business with you, Chevalier. But I have with you, my lord. You asked how I came. I came by the secret passage, having first dealt with your chief of cutthroats, Monsieur Corbeau. An execution for which I will account to those who have the right to question me. Undoubtedly, you will account to someone for this intrusion. It is with you I must settle accounts. Have we an account to settle? I leave such matters to servants. This is neither the time nor the place for such things. This is a royal residence, Chevalier. Did you do not know that? Certainly I know it. Since I have come here to recover my wife. Your wife? My wife, my wife, whom you have tried before to abduct. This time during my absence, you have managed to drug her with some foul potion. Drug her? Chevalier, your wife is dead. Dead. Death comes to all of us. It is unfortunate that one so young... If I believe that you had killed her, you would already have joined your friend, Corpo. But I don't believe you. As you will, Chevalier. I do but tell you the truth. You lie. Your lust for power is my insurance. What influence would you have at court if Aurora were dead? Would the king listen to a dead woman? Oh, no, my lord. She is but drugged. It seems you know more than I guess. I know enough. I know you planned that Aurora should take the place of my son with the king. That I was married to Aurora to suit your plans and sent to Freiburg in the hope that German bullets would succeed where your secretaries had failed. Young man, if you knew so much, you should have had the wit to be silent. Your infamy robs me of all wit. You think I lightly renounce the gains of what you call my infamy? Gains for which I've gambled all? Come, I'll be generous. Let us share, or I'll take all. Share? Think, my boy, think. The highest state reasons constrain me to act this part. The sacrifices I require are necessary to the peace of the world. The peace of the world. You are a lad of intelligence and must surely understand that such a cause as that is worth any sacrifice. Leave your rapier then and cease to glare at me so. Be sensible. Get you gone. I go with my wife. Oh, you try my patience, you breath on clog. Yet I would not wish to harm one so young. Go now, quickly, before I lose my temper and kill you. Kill me? Ah, whom have you to help you, old man? I need no help, Breton. You forget, my lord. I have already cleared the earth of your scoundrels. You are nearer to the grave than I at this moment. Aurora. Aurora. Not so fast, my friend. I and my sword stand between you. Defend yourself unless you wish to die. With that toothpick you talk of killing me, defend yourself, old man. <laughs> You're a bit of swordsman on my fourth breton. It's a pity you're so tired. Allow me to compliment you too, my lord. It is a pity you are old. Uh, yet, monsieur, there's an advantage in age sometimes. I fought with greater swordsmen than you ever knew before you were born. You are lighter than I... And in truth, you are a better swordsman than any I have backed against. You are kind, monsieur. But my cause is right. And for her sake, I must end this duel. The child is stirring. 
I've not long to play with you, monsieur. We must think now. Let us understand. What's the thrust of Porthos? The thrust of Porthos? No. You used the thrust of Porthos. We both used it. Together. At the same moment as if it were fate. And your sword, the lighter, broke beneath the double thrust. I, I didn't know there was any left alive beside myself who, who knew that thrust. Which Porthos himself? Porthos himself, you... You knew Porthos. He was my friend. God rest his soul. He was my father. Your, your father? Porthos, your father? And yet I should have guessed it. He died because I drew him unwittingly into a tragedy. Porthos, the strongest of us all. I killed him innocently, heaven knows. I, now it seems I... Almost killed his son. Who then are you? I do not understand at all. They called me Adamus. And you, the son of Porthos, my brave Porthos. Oh, heaven that my hand had brought you so close to death that my ambition should blind my eyes to all that Porthos held so dear. My lord, my father, I have sought his name. Oh, he was Baron de Vallon. Oh, he was my friend. And it was his son. His son. Oh, forgive me, Joel. Forgive an old man who was so sorely deceived. You have no need to kill me now, for it, it seems I, I cannot live with such a weight upon my conscience. And yet I... I wish to live, to reign, and have all the world to one. <laughs> that, that one I... <laughs> Lord, Adam, sit down. My Oh, my boy, I did not know. forgets his manners as to beat his liege with stars and slumber. How old he looks. How old and ill. But what is this? What have I skipped on? A broken sword. My lord, Almada. Almada. I was mistaken. This is not sleep. It is death. The accomplished courtier has committed the unpardonable sin. He has sat death beneath the eyes of a king. But of the girl. Gone. 
a dead duke, a broken sword, an empty room. Who will explain these things for me? Who will tell me what drama has been played here while I was delayed? I will, my liege. Madame de Sigir, what business have you here? Most urgent business, sire. I do most humbly crave a hearing. It seems I have already refused you one, madame. I sent a message I would see you later. And I received it, your majesty. But yet I had to see you. Do the wishes of your sovereign mean nothing to you? What right have you in these apartments? The right of justice, sire. Your majesty must be me. Must? Must? What talk is this? Does no one abide by the etiquette of the court any longer? Is it not least a sovereign should be forced to look on death and yet bear it, my lord of Almada, and you disobeying the orders of your sovereign lord? When I had already informed you, madam, I did not wish to be disturbed. Sire, I am the governess of your children. I have watched over them, protected them, loved them. And through them I have come to revere their father and look upon him as my friend. Well, well? One protects one's friend, sire. And it is because I learned that you were being deceived by those you trusted that I braved your anger, disobeyed your orders, and came to you here. Even as I braved my mistress's displeasure and disobeyed her orders, rather than let the children fall into danger. What is all this about? If you would but grant me a hearing... Very well. Come with me where we can talk undisturbed. I will hear what you have to say, madame. 